Hello everybody, Hot Jupiter here. Welcome to Corporal Space Program, Episode 5. Last time we went to the moon, I think today we should travel to Midmus. It seems like the next logical step in the Kerbal system. Now, getting to Midmus isn't really as bad as it might look. You might say, well, it's farther out, the inclination's a little off from the ecliptic, it looks kind of too small to maybe land on, but believe it or not, let's go, let's take a look. Minmus has, it does have its fair share of mountainous areas, but it also has a lot of these little lake beds in it. Let me check it out. So we got these little low patches here where I, I believe it's sea level. So that's, if you're like kind of a, a beginner player, as I was, um, you can definitely choose to land on these little, these little low-lying areas here. If you're more daring, you can choose these little mountains. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know, there's a fair share of flat highlands too, like right around here. Um, I think one of these is called the Greater Flats, one of these is called the Lesser Flats. I, I can't remember. Um, if you're in career mode, you you know, there's different biomes now in Minmus in this particular version of Kerbal Space Program. I think 0.23, the added biomes from Minmus. I think there's about six of them. So, and you know, what's, what's great about Minmus is once you get a lander there, you know, you can pretty much do your science, you know, take your crew reports, your server samples, get back in your ship, and you barely have to thrust at all because the gravity is so low, and you can just pretty much hop around to all the biomes on Minmus and still have plenty of fuel to get back home. In fact, I'll kind of probably do that today. So let's let's go to the vehicle assembly building, and I feel like we'll we'll build a new craft just so it doesn't get too boring using the same vehicle over and over and over again because you know we totally could use our moon lander to to get there lunar lander mark one i forget which one it was i have two of them let's check it out this is the one we took to the moon we could totally use this um to go to minmus and the entire launcher but um just you know i don't want to make things boring let's let's be exciting right let's let's make a fresh new design here um, I think though I will use the same lander can because that's pretty much the best way to go if you're gonna land like a single man craft. So the start is gonna look a little much the same. We're gonna pop that parachute right on there and we're gonna come over here grab our batteries in much the same fashion. That seemed to work out pretty good last time. <coughs> Photo panels here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Come over here and grab our decoupler. Now this time, let's see, let's grab, do we want to go big? Big or go home? Something like that? And nope, I don't think so. I think we're still gonna, uh, you know, let's, let's, uh, maybe we'll do one of these. Just way it's kind of like fat and low, you know what I mean? Because <clears throat> that's that's kind of a better landing system anyway than being too tall. And I might go with these big struts. They're a little more massive. Let's see. They're, they're a lot more massive, um, but I think they're supposed to go with this type of thing here. And you know what? Let's um. Let's try the, the little ones. I'm going to take it out to the launch pad and just check it out. <clears throat> Let's just see if um, it'll support the weight. If it if it does, then we're going to use them just because they're a little lighter. If not, then we'll scrap it and try the bigger ones. Okay, here we are on the pad. We're going to hit the G key for the gear. Hey, that's not too bad. It looks like it's doing a good job. I think we'll keep it. Oh, look at that. Look at that moon in Minmus right there. This this game never ceases to amaze me. Okay, good. So that is fine. We will revert the flight to the vehicle assembly building. Okay, let's continue here. We're going to need some engines. I think, um, let's see. I wonder if we could get away with... Some side-mounted engines. 
hesitant to use these because the thrust is only 20. But then again, I don't want to use these because I feel like they'll chew right through the fuel. Yeah, you know, let's try them. Let's give them a shot. Let's put these babies on here. Two, we'll put two of them. Let's see, we'll, we'll try that. Um, let's see, engine ISP. See, I'm, I'm looking, if you look over the right on the stats over engine, so engine ISP is 388, and then that's, that's in an atmosphere, and 390 in a vacuum, which basically ISP is specific impulse, and the higher that number is, the more efficient your engine is. It's not going to chew through fuel as much. Um, so that's actually on the higher end of efficiency. I think that's going to be okay. I'm just wondering if I'm going to need more fuel, but, you know, we'll see how we go. Um, was I totally looking at this one? I totally was. <laughs> I was looking at the aerospike. So let's look at our actual engine 320 in a vacuum. So that's not too bad either. That's that's okay. We can go with that. Um, we don't really need a ladder on Minmus. Like, really don't need one. But let's just put a little... Just for looks, right? Just to make it look look cute. This game's cute. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Okay, um, what else do we need on this thing? Probably don't need lights, but uh, I think lights always look good. Yeah, let's put a couple lights on it, right? Why not? Um, let's see. Where can we put these? Can we put them on here? Yeah, why not? I'm just going to push the Shift <coughs> S key just to change the angle a little bit just so they point a little more <laughs> they're, not, they're not really attached to anything they're kind of just floating there so there's some kind of strange quantum bridge that is connecting the lights to the engines here in in the Kerbal world it's anything is possible so we'll keep that <laughs> that looks okay I guess um, okay we probably need a decoupler if it'll fit and it does good so let's build up from there. I think um, I think this time we'll we'll go with the larger tanks, right? Because we really want to make sure that we get out there. And since we kind of went to the larger tank on the lander, so you know what I'm gonna do? Actually, I'm I'm gonna double up on fuel, just because I want to really be able to hop around Minmus and just check out all the sites. So we're just gonna do a little doubling up, and in that case. Might as well just take the standard ladder. Might as well just do it. It's not going to really hurt us too much. There we are. And you know what? We can then come up here and we can put our lights the proper way, right? <laughs> okay. They might kind of shine on the, the legs a little bit, but that's okay. Alright, we'll pop the decouple around there like that and let's do our ascent stage. Now, if you guys are playing career mode, you might not have these orange tanks, so what I'm going to do is just use these big gray ones, because they're, you know, two of these are about the same thing as one of those. And we're going to choose the skipper. Aye, skipper! To get up there. There we are. And... Let's go, and I think we'll, we can probably be okay with two, but you know, here's what we'll do. We'll kind of do like an intro to the asparagus, and I'll tell you exactly what that means. We're going to go with two of these, right? I'm just, I grabbed the radial decoupler. We've never used this one, the TT-70. Pop them on the side, pretty much in the middle of this tank like this. Grab this Rocco Max. So let's around the side like that. Alt click, get two of them, stack them right on top of each other. Alt click the engine, get them like that. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back and get our fuel duct, the external fuel duct, and we're going to attach it, starting on the outer tanks first, that is key, don't forget that. You'll be upset with me if, it doesn't, if you don't do that and it doesn't work out. I'm going to click it in, so again you can follow the arrows on the yellow duct. It's going to take from the outside tanks and dump the fuel into the center tank. 
even though all three engines are firing, it's going to leave the center stack full of fuel, which we can then use to get to uh, Minmus. So with staging, we're going to make sure that stage four fires first with all the engines, just as you know, just to keep things nice and neat. And always get into this habit. As soon as you attach anything, whoops, we're going to need to strut it up. Just strut it up. Right on the top and right on the bottom. Obviously, if you have your own um, method of strutting stuff, by all means use it. This is just the one that has worked the best for me. Okay, so just in case these tanks decide to crash into everything, we're going to use the Sepatron motors again. So again, I'm pressing the D key, I'm going to point it straight into the center of the craft like that. Alt-click, come around here on the other side, press the D key twice, sw swivel that thing right around. And now I'm just checking for evenness. Looks like the left side's a little higher, so I'm just going to bring it down. It's okay to be a perfectionist. <coughs> All right, there we are. So what's going to happen? Oh, I better change the separatrons. Let's always make sure that they are staged with these decouplers here. So we're just going to move them up to that stage like that. Okay, let's let's save this before we go any further. We'll call this Minmus Lander One. Now we, we probably actually have enough fuel, but just to be on the safe side, you know me, I like to over budget. Let's grab another stack and we're going to put them, make sure that they're lined up along the same like Y axis as the other tanks. Oops, it's not liking it. Sometimes it doesn't like it for whatever reason. It really doesn't like it, so you got to swivel around maybe. Let's see, you get it just lined up. There we are. And so you see what's happened then is it's copied over everything, including the struts and the fuel ducts. But we're not going to leave the fuel ducts like that. What we're going to do is, on this new set of tanks that I just installed, we're going to take those fuel ducts, we're going to come over here on the side, start on the ones we just placed, and move it into the original set of tanks. It's a little off. If it's a little off, it's okay. It's a little better. And so what this means is now these outer tanks are going to feed these outer tanks, which are then going to feed this, these center stacks. So these outer tanks are going to burn up really fast because they're feeding the whole rocket. And they're all going to fire at the same time. Looks like we have another like another Saturn V type thing going on here. Again, we might, this is, might be a little bit of overkill, but I would rather over budget fuel than have no fuel left over. The only thing is we have to make sure our staging is correct, so we're going to take this most recent tanks, we're going to create a new stage, stage 5, take the most recent decoupler, that's this one here, slide it down to stage 5, take the most recent set of Separatron motors, bring them down there too, and I believe this one is also them, yep, bring them down to stage 5 also. So just to recap, I know this, this sounds way more confusing than it is, but it, it's going to make sense. What you're doing is, you're firing all the engines at once. The first thing that is going to decouple is this newer set of tanks, because they're feeding everything. They're going to be out of fuel very quickly. They're going to drop away. The next thing that's going to decouple is these older ones here, because they're only feeding this one, and then finally they're going to break off, we're going to have a full set of full fuel in the middle, and that's going to be the machine or the vehicle to take us to Minmus. Once we get there we'll decouple and just have the lander, and we can use this lander here to kind of hop around Minmus and check out all the biomes. Even though in this sandbox mode there are no real biomes, it's, you know, you, you get, you'll be able to see what you can do. Now we're going to go over here and just prop the whole thing up. Unfortunately, you, you can't do Symmetry 4 because it thinks you're still in twos. So you just gotta place them here, alt-click, and try to find the same spot. Roughly the same spot. Right at the bottom of that little line, that's, that's probably fine. 
And just to always check your staging, it looks like those are going to go with the bottom stage. That's exactly what we want. Just save it again. And I know we strutted this, but let's just be safe. You know me, I like to strut the hell out of all these things. So we're just going to go right across like that. And we're going to go right across like that. Now since it's, again, only in two symmetry, you got to do it one more time. Asparagus is a little more of a pain in the ass. Now this is just like, this is kind of a basic asparagus. You could go one step further, move these outer ones closer, and put a, th a third set of tanks. You would have six tanks on the outside, and a seventh in the middle. That's if you're going to like Duna, or some other interplanetary object. Um, but we don't need that. Like I said, we could probably just get away with the, the double set on the outside, but I don't want to be out of fuel because that would be very embarrassing. <laughs> Alright, let's do our action groups. We're going to go ahead and custom one toggle the panels. Save that. And I think that's it. I'm trying to think if we need anything else for Minmus. Oh, <laughs> you know what I should probably put on is uh, some kind of SAS, right? Some kind of control. So we're going to grab the the large one here, the large advanced SAS, right on the bottom there. And because I did that, I might just move these down just, just a touch, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Reconnect. Do a little save. And that's going to be that. I think we're ready. Let's choose our crew. So we have the original three. You know, I guess Jeb can have his turn again. Why not? Jeb can go. I mean, he's he's the star of the game, right? All right. Let's launch. Okay, here we are. I believe that's a little sun setting there. That's okay. So we're going to throttle up. I'm going to hit the T key. And we are going to launch this thing in 3, 2, 1. Boy, she's heavy. <laughs> she's heavy, so maybe that's good that we have that extra fuel on there. Jump dies a little scared. Don't be scared, Jeb. Everything's fine. Checking out his radar altimeter here. Getting up there. So as you can see on the left here, these outer tanks here that we're using to feed the whole rocket, they are just burning away. They're burning fast, these bottom two here. So they're feeding the entire rocket. So soon they're going to be empty and we will stage them and you'll see a beautiful Sepatron separation coming up on four kilometers. Our speed is pretty good. It's not going too fast. It's now just starting to pick up some really good acceleration. Accelerating at about a G and a half, maybe a G and a quarter. Coming up on staging, and here we go. Sounds like something horrible happened. <laughs> but I think everything's okay. Let's see, I'm going to press F3. Sepatron was damaged by engine exhaust. Okay, so that was what happened there was when the tank fell away, the engine exhaust destroyed one of the Sepatron engines that fell away. But that's okay, because we don't need that anymore. Alright, we're doing great. So now these outer stacks have a full set of fuel. And that's that's one of the best things about using these barracks, is that every time you stage, you get another fresh full set. So here we are on 10 kilometers, and we're just going to start pitching over. tell you the truth, I probably put, should have put some kind of wings on here to help turn us, but I think we're going to be okay. We have that big SAS module in there. Now when I start pitching over and the ship is kind of like 
vertically slicing like that, I kind of like to press the E key and just roll us. I like to roll the ship. Just because it looks like that would be better for the ship, you know. Aerodynamically make more sense. I could be just, you know, deluding myself, but... Alright, we're going to keep pitching over, because I'm fairly certain we're getting some nice altitude. There we are. We're at about a 45 degree angle now. Man, she's heavy. Getting some nice altitude. I, I kind of get the feeling that once I stage this, our um, thrust weight ratio is going to be a little less. So I'm just maybe going to go for a little more height. Just to make sure we're really going to get out of that atmosphere. Maybe we'll pitch down a little more towards the prograde marker just to get our acceleration up. And the stars have come out. We're just getting above the thick parts of the atmosphere here. I never noticed that. If you look at the sun, the stars kind of blink out a little bit. All right, here we are on staging. There they fall. God, that's cool. <laughs> so here we have a full tank of gas, right? Oh, this is really getting away from us. I'm just going to point this thing totally 90. Totally 90, bro. Get as much lateral speed as possible before we hit the 100. We're just pointing straight across now. Getting there, getting ready to hit the X key. And there we are. Add maneuver node, we're going to toggle this around. Get our circular orbit. Oops, I passed it. <laughs> it flips so fast sometimes. There we are. It's gonna, wow, it's going to be a 30 second burn. So I probably could have done that ascent a little better. I, I got paranoid and pushed vertically too much instead of going more laterally so I'm paying for it right now if that makes any sense I kind of went too much too vertically um, instead of paying attention to going around the planet laterally so like I said I'm gonna pay for it a little bit that's okay I think we have we have plenty of fuel to get to min miss all right I'm gonna burn at 15 seconds full blast point right at that node. Coming up on our burn now. So we're just completing that orbit. I think we should have enough fuel. Halfway there. Just pushing that orbit out. <laughs> Here comes the periapsis, and shut down. There we are. All right, there's our orbit, and we still have a little bit, just a just fumes in this top tank, but then a full 1,400 fuel in this bottom tank. Perfect. That should that should at least get us most of the way, if not the whole way, to Minmus. <clears throat> So there's one thing we have to do. Let's um, let's set Minmus as the target, and you'll notice here those two little dotted lines going straight across here. One says looks like A N, one says D N. This is the ascending node and the descending node. And if you notice, Minmus is not perfectly across the ecliptic, is it? It's it's inclined. We have to match that because if we just if we just made a burn out there. Oop, that's a little too far. 
we might get lucky and hit it like at like a right around here it's so close to our own orbit that it you know we could get lucky but we don't want to have to sit there and worry about you know getting lucky we want to just we want to do it the right way so what we're going to do is since we're almost to this descending node here we're going to put this maneuver node here and just like in episode 2 we are going to adjust this. Now, if it's this descending node, you're going to want to pull up. I know it seems like you might want to pull down, but you're going to pull up. And you're going to pull it until this descending node reads 0.0, .0 or as close to that as possible. Usually when they swap around, see right there, they both will say 0.0. .0. And if you look at the orange projected orbit, it's perfectly now aligned with Minmus's inclination. And that's going to only take 231 meters per second of burn to line up the orbit like that. So let's find the node. It's, I think it's just pointing north. We're just making our ship point straight up and down. Man, this thing's cumbersome. Yep, come on, come back, come back. I probably should have put RCS on here. But. Oh well. Okay, there we are. So we're just going to warp to that. It's only a 13 second burn. Probably burn in 6 seconds. <clears throat> Coming up on the burn. Look at the orbit here, it's matching it. And X. So we can just double check ascending node 0, 0.0. So we did a good burn. We don't have to make any more corrections in that regard. So if you see, our blue orbit is now lined practically perfect with the green orbit of Minmus. We've matched the orbit. Now, Minmus, since it's further away from its parent object, the, the carbon. Um, it's going to be orbiting a little slower than the moon. So, the Minimus velocity is only 274 meters per second, whereas the moon is 500. So, what that means is we don't have to burn too far ahead of it because it's not really going to catch up on us. In fact, the perfect spot to burn was is probably right where we are. Let's just test it out. Now, before there was maneuver nodes. I don't know if any of you played this game before. I think it was version. 0.18 when they had that. You had to just guess this and it was horrible because a lot of the times you'd be wrong. Like, I just guessed that, right? And so I would have just started burning there and it turns out I would have missed it by miles, by a, a long shot, and I would have been very upset. <laughs> and I would have probably rage quit. So, you know, it's good that they added these maneuver nodes. That was probably the best thing they could have ever done. Ah, so what's happening here is we're actually getting a moon encounter stupid moon is in the way it's and it's precisely where we need to be which is kind of annoying but yeah look at that stupid moon <laughs> it's it's it can't possibly be in a wor be in a worse spot um i'm wondering though can we use the moon to get a min miss encounter how cool would that be no maneuver node stay dang it <laughs> all right hold on <clears throat> my ship, sometimes if your ship goes past the maneuver node, it'll just automatically cancel it. Okay. This is, actually, this, this is a little better. Nope. Minimus periapsis, a million. I think we're going way too far. But come on. These things are kind of a pain in the ass. Oops. So maybe a little further that way. Kind of just have to finagle it. And of course, if we turn that way, we get a moon encounter. Of course we do! <laughs> Ugh, moon, you're annoying. It looks like... 
Okay, it looks like the moon is going to also give us a min miss encounter. I don't know how good it's going to be, and I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but, you know, that's exciting and interesting, and I have that, you know, that really rarely happens, so, you know, let's take it. Let's, we're going to let the moon give us a, a bit of a slingshot, and that might actually save us some fuel. It might be worse for us, too, but, so what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to point at the node. We're going to give it a shot. Or, uh, I'm already out of time. I'm trying to keep these episodes close to 30 minutes, and the last couple of ones I haven't. So, I think... I'm just gonna get this encounter, and then we will we will go to the next episode. But here we go around the planet. There's the stupid moon, always in the way. And I don't know if you could see it. There's Minmus right behind it, a little flickering of light, <laughs> right above it. That's our real target. So this burns a little longer than the burn for the moon, just a little longer. I'm going to burn it about 25 seconds. There we are. <clears throat> Making our burn. Pushing us through space. <laughs> Two hundred meters per second to go. getting close, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Alright. <clears throat> Let's see what we have. Actually, according to this, we're missing the moon. That's probably okay, actually. I'm going to thrust a little further. Just see if I can't get this periapsis to go down a little bit more. I'm just I'm just tapping the throttle just to see if I can get this periapsis lower. Oh, 34. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So there we have it. We've we've miraculously missed the moon. Uh, I guess the game decided to be nice to us, um, and we have our min miss encounter. So I think we'll call this episode to a close, and when we come back. We will get to Minmus, we will land, and we'll kind of hop around and explore different places of Minmus. Thanks for watching. See you next time.